The Mobile Suit Gundam is arguably one of the most iconic images in pop culture today. It's so synonymous with the concept of mech that even your mom is likely to call a mobile suit a Gundam. It's important to reiterate as always that anime is a medium, not a genre, and although we've seen a steady decline over the last decade, mecha to anime is like platformers to video games. And Gundam is by far the most beloved facet of that genre. More specifically, the real robot subgenre of mecha as opposed to the super robot subgenre which began in the 1940s. It's also a genre I'm not super familiar with and one that, as previously stated, has declined in popularity, hence my year-long wait to touch the subject. However, it cannot be overstated the quality and importance of Mecha, and Mecha cannot be explored without first introducing yourself to Gundam, the 15th top grossing media franchise of all time, right under Batman and right above Dragon Ball. And as a sci-fi nerd, you think the call towards Mecha anime would be strong for me, and you would be right but just like all new things, it can be nerve-wracking getting into bed with them. So I figured we would start where most Westerners began their journey into space on March 6, 2000 with Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Let's get into it. Gundam Wing was the first series in the franchise to be aired on Western television in 2000 thanks to the glorious benevolence of Toonami. It was also one of the first shows to be featured on both the regular afternoon block and the midnight run. This allowed people to witness it in its uncut glory, blood and all. For many, Wing was a revelation and within a week it was the top rated program on Cartoon Network across all age groups. It's credited for single-handedly popularizing the franchise and mecha anime in the West, which is ironic considering its lackluster performance in Japan. Gundam Wing was what introduced me to Gundam as well, but to be honest, I remember not liking it, and there's a good reason for that. I wasn't able to catch the first few episodes as they were airing, but a friend of mine told me how awesome it was and that I had to give it a try. Nowadays, that's perfectly manageable due to the advent of streaming services, but if you were to try and jump into Gundam Wing on episode 10 or so like I did in 2000, you'd likely have the same reaction confusion. I had no idea what was going on, no idea who anyone was, and there was a whole lot of talking. I got bored and dipped out for a few years until G Gundam premiered, which is still one of my all-time favorite anime. Mobile Suit Gundam Wing is a complex and intricate story of politics, philosophy, war, and giant mech suits. It's not something to be jumped into halfway. There are many, many characters, affiliations, relationships, factions, and alliances to keep track of which are constantly evolving and changing. There were many times, even during my rewatch of the series, where as an adult I had to rewind because I had no idea what was going on or why some random pair of characters were suddenly at odds. But I did come out of the experience feeling mostly satisfied and once again impressed at the lofty ambitions of the narrative. In the year after Colony 195, a group of five young boys are sent to Earth in mobile suits from the space colonies located at the Earth-Moon Lagrange points. These pilots are on a revenge mission codenamed Operation Meteor to strike at the Order of the Zodiac aka Oz. The five boys are piloting mobile suits known as Gundams, horrifically powerful weapons of war named so after their construction material, Gundanium, which is essentially this universe's adamantium. Basically, these things can take a lot of heat. Hito Yui of the XXXG-01W Wing Gundam, Duo Maxwell of the XXXG-01D Gundam Death Scythe, Troa Barton of the XXXG-01H Gundam Heavy Arms, Quatre Winner of the XXXG-01SR Gundam Sandrock, and Shang Wu Fei of the XXXG-01S Shenlong are all trained in assassination, piloting, physical defense, as well as combat and warfare. They arrive at different destinations on solo missions completely unaware of each other. While the other four land safely, Hero, the main protagonist, is shot down by a prolific Oz mobile pilot known as Zex Marquise, and Hero's wing Gundam sinks to the bottom of the ocean. While there's a lot of excellent moments in the show, I would say my strongest impressions are of Hero's introduction. I find him to be an ambitious choice for a main protagonist, and after crash landing into the ocean, he washes up on a beach and is found by Relena Darlian, the daughter of the United Earth Sphere Alliance's Vice Foreign Minister. And if that title doesn't paint a picture of the kind of show that Gundam Wing is, I don't know what to tell you. Relena removes Hero's helmet, calls an ambulance, and wakes him up only to have him freak out and attempt suicide, which fails thanks to a faulty explosive in his suit. He then kicks the crap out of four MTs before stealing their ambulance and taking off. And instead of panicking like a normal person, Relena is clearly hot and bothered becoming fascinated by Hero, setting up a confusing relationship that will grow and change over the next 49 episodes. In an attempt to research his Oz targets, Hero ends up enrolling at the same school as Relena, who invites him to her 
birthday party. Instead of accepting, Hiro tears the invitation in two, and as he walks by her, he threatens her life. In another world, this could be seen as kind of badass, but because of Hiro's age and his incredible resting bench face, he just comes off as a deranged sociopath. It's always incredibly difficult to tell what he's thinking or dissect his motives. Hiro and the other four Gundam pilots were raised and trained in seclusion on the space colonies by what would be considered mad scientists. Operation Meteor and the development of the Gundams were devised by these scientists as an act of revenge against Oz, who produces weapons for the United Earth Sphere Alliance, which cruelly oppresses the space colonies. A space colony revolution had been staged 20 years prior but was ended by an assassination maintaining the oppressed status of the colonies and further escalating the restrictions from the UESA. The goal of Operation Meteor is destroy Oz in order to choke off the United Earth Sphere Alliance access to weapons. Oh, and this is all episode 1 stuff by the way. What proceeds is a 50 episode epic revolving around Hero and his peers as well as the heads and warriors of competing political powers throughout Earth and its colonies. As the viewer, we witness war and death on a grand scale and watch as this small group of miners struggle with their personal morality as they mature through this conflict. Each of them are as unique as their Gundams and each have a different outlook on their role and the conflict they're taking part in. However, the other main players are just as important and each symbolize an ideology of their own. Relena eventually becomes a strict pacifist. Zex, who pilots the incredibly awesome Gundam prototype Talgeese, wrestles with his desire for pacifism, his role as an ace mech pilot and his place within the competing factions. And then there's Trees, the de facto antagonist and leader of Oz. While portrayed as the bad guy, Trees has a charisma and honor to him that generally makes him more relatable than any of the other characters. He is a warmonger, but not in the classic way we would conceive one. He believes in the notion that conflict conducted by humans brings progress and cures stagnation. He upholds a statute of honor in battle and while devious, never seems dastardly. Unlike the chief engineer of a latter villainous group called the Romfeller Foundation. The foundation works to spread war for profit rather than progress and in doing so creates mobile dolls or automated mechs, basically unmanned war robots. The existence of these dolls flies in the face of Trias's honor and belief in the necessity of the human element in warfare to give it meaning. Wing is a series where everyone is at odds with themselves and the world around them. One of my favorite characters, Lady Un, is the literal embodiment of these conflicts. She starts out as a ruthless military leader in a assassin, but when sent to the space colonies to be an Oz liaison, she's forced to adopt a kinder, gentler personality at Trees' request. Eventually, her two sides come into internal conflict, causing a temporary personality disorder before she comes out of it as a well-balanced person. And that's what I would say that Gundam Wing is really about. It's internal conflict, coming to the grips with who you are and your role in the world, realizing your own feelings about conflict, the value of life and peace, but also the necessity of violence and the ingrained hypocrisy of our species. For as long as man has existed, there has been war on all fronts, for land, for resources, for religion, for love, for social status, and even for happiness. Each day you're alive can be seen as a battle on multiple levels. Doing your best is a fight. However, how you and others conduct conflict is another matter altogether, and what's left in the wake of that conflict will end up defining your legacy. And just because you may be a perfect soldier doesn't mean that's all you have to be. We as human beings are hypocritical simply because we hold beliefs. There's no room for progress when you believe in something. The nature of belief is black and white, rigid, sound, and unchangeable. Yet because we learn through experience, the beliefs we hold inevitably change as well, causing us what could be considered a crisis of character. What was once the right thing to do doesn't always stay that way or apply to every single situation. Laws don't suit every case or scenario, and loyalties are subject to change given circumstance. So how can we call them loyalties at all. I mentioned how confusing Gundam Wing can be, and it certainly is, and that is because all perspectives are valid. What you hold to be true can mean nothing to another person who doesn't adhere or conform to your perspective. Though the world continues to grow more homogenous due to globalization, we can see how different a worldview can be if we look back at the many and varied nations of history. I believe that Wing emphasizes its themes purposefully with confusion because its characters 
are confused. Relena cannot maintain a pacifist nation without the military protection required to hold its borders from aggressors. Zex cannot be a pacifist and a warrior at the same time. Humans require an equilibrium, but we're taught that you cannot be two opposing things at once. This belief causes mental feedback, which in turn causes confusion. The Gundam pilots were raised to be warriors, but for each of them there is a point where they cannot figure out who the enemy really is, and they can't figure out what they're fighting for anymore. However, because they've labeled themselves and these labels have been confirmed by others, without an enemy, they no longer know who they are or what they're supposed to do. With 40 years under the Gundam franchise's belt and now a widespread global fandom, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing is no longer considered the best or the end-all be-all of Gundam. And it definitely has its issues, a main character who can be extremely difficult to relate to and in some points, absolutely shoddy animation. There was many, many instances where I saw the same sequence repeated over and over and over in a battle across multiple episodes to a point that it's laughable when you're benching the show. However, there is a reason it holds a special place in the heart of many as it's likely the first time a major and drawn out conflict of character was thrust into people's faces. And that feature of the show was purposeful. The creators deliberately drew back from Gundam fights and more towards character relationships. Gundam Wing is possibly the first long-running anime series people watched back in the early 2000s. And if you're a Westerner, it was likely your first experience with Gundam. Most people consider the Gundam trope to be war bad, peace good, however at least to me it argued that there's little difference between the two concepts. That war and peace are just two sides to the same coin, because for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, every lasting peace will end in a lasting conflict and vice versa. And though the actions will be different, both of these situations must be dealt with when they come around. It's part of life. Growth comes from soil nourished by lives that have ended. Our bodies are fueled by sacrificing lives. It's coming to grips with that sacrifice and realizing that eventually it will be your turn that is the hardest part of self-realization and how you conduct yourself afterwards will inevitably define you. There's always an element of choice in things which is the most important assurance in times of struggle. Call it karma, call it Newton's third law, it is inevitable that no matter how dark things become, something good will eventually be around the corner. I know, I know, you guys wanted me to take a look at the tall geese and the Gundams and talk about how cool they are, but this is our first time talking about Gundam in particular. Uh, this is only our second mecha video, if you even count Evangelion as, you know, mecha. And with an anime this long and complicated, I wanted to take more of a cursory look at the series and gauge interest in the subject before I just full dived into this crazy stuff. So if you like this video and you want more, you have to let us know either in the comments below, on Twitter or Instagram. And if you're new here and you want to see more, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell, do all the notification stuff, all the crap that we have to tell you at the end of every video or you want to do it. And hey, if you've watched a bunch of our videos already and you want to make sure that Bonsai Pop continues to be a thing, why don't you check out our Patreon or our merch or both. Speaking of which, shout out to our Super Saiyan God, Dr. Dad, for making sure that our bellies are full so these videos can get made. Thank you so much, Dr. Dad. And to our lucky patron of the week, Jarud. And like I said before, make sure to follow us on Twitter. That is at Bonsai underscore pop for things about upcoming cons. I just did a tweet review of a video game called Wonderling that was written by Fasciani, a guy who works for the Completionist. And check out our Instagram, same moniker, where I post pictures of things. Anyway, I think that's it. Make sure to watch more of our videos. My name is Mike. This is Bonsai Pop, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.